I'm in a very large store, and that's got me thinking about a principle from economics, and that is the difference between money, wealth, and value. Because they're not the same thing. The stuff around me right now is wealth. What wealth is, um, by the classical definitions, is stuff that has been transformed by human effort into something that you want to use. For example, a rock isn't all that useful. But if you take that rock and if you chop that rock into a square section and then you can use it as a paver, suddenly that rock has been transformed by labor and, you know, the tools that you used, and now it's in a more useful form. And I actually kind of want it for something. This was once plastic pellets, and before that it was oil drilled up from the ground. So it's a natural resource that's been transformed by human ingenuity and time and labor and tools into something that we can actually use. Um, the crazy thing about money is money isn't quite that. You can't eat it. You can try. I mean, wash it first because money's kind of gross. But um, if you had all the money in the world, all of it, every last cent, you owned every single dollar there ever was, and all the rubles and all of the euros and all of the yen and absolutely all of the money and nothing else, you would starve to death and you would be naked and you would have no house. And it's kind of crazy that the reason people want money is actually not for money's own sake. Money is called a contingent good. It is a thing that is useful only if it can get you access to wealth. So when we talk about inflation and other things, we're talking about essentially a mismatch between money and wealth. There's more money in this, in the ecosystem, in this thing that we call the economy, but unless the wealth has also gone up with it, you end up having more dollars chasing the same number of goods. The trouble with money in a sense is that it's too darn useful. It's so useful that you can use it essentially as a proxy where it represents wealth to you. You can kind of measure how much wealth you have access to in the world by taking a look at your bank account and seeing how much of this liquid, movable, easily tradable thing that you can predict someone else wants, you have. But strictly speaking, that's not actually what you want. So the question is, what do you want? And that gets us to thing number three. Separate from money and separate from wealth, we have this thing called value. And value is only those things that you actually want. In a hardware store like this, I have a weakness for projects. And usually when I see something, whether or not I use it for the thing it was intended for, I can usually find a reason to want it. If I owned a store like this, I'd be quite happy to just make projects until the day I died. But, you know, if I walk into a big box store like, say, Walmart, and look at the big screen TV rack, I don't actually want them. I look at that and it's not going to improve my quality of life. It's not something that I desire, which means, you know, you can throw sales at me and lower the prices, but I'm just not that interested. My needs are met by a fairly small TV and then the projector downstairs. I don't want it. And this actually gets back to this thing called supply and demand. Demand actually is extremely subjective. You get to decide what your wants are, what you value. When I see a price tag like this on a product, essentially what this I thing that we call a price is, is a negotiation. This is an offer that's put out by the store that says, hey, I am willing, or the store as an entity, is willing to part with this thing if I am willing to give it that much money. And then the question for me is, would I rather have the money and keep it, or would I rather have this? And so it's a preference game. They have determined what their preference is and stated it here very easily for me to read. And now I get to pick and see whether or not my preferences line up with that. It gets a little bit more complicated for things that are absolute necessities like food in the first place, but even there you get a whole lot of parallel sideways options. So this thing, this we call a price, is determined by supply and demand. Supply, that's pretty objective. That's how much wealth there is in the world to fulfill your needs. But demand? That is 100% subjective. It's kind of a aggregate subjective because it's subjectively how I feel about it doesn't determine the whole thing. It's subjectively how you and you and you and you and you all think about it. And that's where prices come from. That is the, the number that we've kind of reached where they're gonna hit the right number of people to turn a profit. 
based on people's desire. And that's where we can steer the economy. That's a lot of lawnmowers. And the crazy thing is, these machines are, you know, thousands of dollars a piece. And I have no desire to own one. But presumably, there is enough demand to make it worth it. Otherwise, the store wouldn't put this many out. Because you don't put this many of anything out unless you think you have a decent shot of selling it. This is an example of a thing that, you know, is a form of wealth. It's a thing that people have made with a lot of effort and with capital and with labor and with natural resources. And it costs money, but I do not see the value. Partially because, you know, having a lawnmower that size means that you have a very large lawn. And if I have that much space, I'm not dedicating it to lawn. I've got bigger plans. I am much more interested in this stuff and in the vegetables, which will hopefully be coming here in the next couple of weeks. Because to me, this represents value. Stuff that I want. The crazy thing is, there's a, there's a little bit of a self-fulfilling uh, prophecy with stores like this. When we come to the store as consumers, we see what's available. And that influences our decisions because it makes us think that some things are desirable because we see other people, you know, in the smiling advertisements going for a thing. And so we think, well, maybe I should want that thing. Because we're very, very social creatures, humans. But there's also the other side, which is we must have manifested a certain amount of desire in the first place for one of these products to even be on the shelf. Which means our desires, our subjective preference, our subjective preference for how we want to live, rules the economy. So what do you want? What do you want? Like actually, what does a perfect life look like for you? If you had all the money in the world, you'd, I mean, the money is there to get you something. What does that life look like? If you had a bajillion dollars and could just get the thing that you valued, what is it? And don't say more money because we've already taken care of that in this hypothetical. What is the thing that you want? For me, um, this question is really at the heart of economics. The word economics, it comes from an old Greek word that means, uh, it's oikos, it means household. And for me, that really is the center of happiness for me. I want to live comfortably at home. I want to get the little moments of my life right. I want to be comfortable. That requires a certain amount of money and a certain amount of wealth. I need to, you know, have a couch to sit on and a bed to sleep in and enough heat in the winter. And I would like the wealth involved in taking a vacation now and again, and internet access and the occasional video game, and a lot of time with my kids. I want to watch them grow up. And I want to learn stuff. Those are things that I want. How about you? If you feel like sharing, please share what is value to you. What are the things that drive you? And how much wealth for you would be enough? If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. If it was valuable to you, please share it with a friend because that's very valuable to me. And we look forward to talking to you next time. Bye.